for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is for the players, the pop culture is PlayStation podcast. Over four years of playing PlayStation and 10 plus years in that game's meeting department. Thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you'd like to pay if you'd like to take part in future conversations with us, come and check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash thepopcultures, where you can watch us record this show live, where you can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can tell your friends, tell your family about this position pod. If you are listening on podcast services, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you watch us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. And if you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash the pop cultures as well as our merchandise store but of course the shop where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it so we're recording at like one in the afternoon on a sunday which is like six hours earlier than we normally do it because i am having an absolutely flat out weekend you yourself max have had an absolute flat out weekend by accident it seems Mm. so we're just throwing it out in the afternoon as well but why why has your weekend been so flat out by accident and then i'll go oh, my- in purpose <laughs> also before we do that with big shout out to our twitch chat because as we do we record the show live each and every week uh, over to the reverend park and super marcy it's good to see you both uh, my kids just randomly got sick <laughs> yeah friday, friday friday night at like oh 11 o'clock ish mm. and i just fucking threw up everywhere go in there change all their bed sheets 30 minutes later throws up everywhere again I'm like ah oh, dude you just gotta stop drinking and then change all their bed sheets again throws up everywhere I'm like ah oh, dude like, you know what you're <laughs> sleeping on a top um and then she seemed fine the next morning and I'm like oh it's just one of those one and done things she's got it out of her system <laughs> <laughs> three, like three o'clock Saturday afternoon <laughs> I can throw that over um she's fine now she seems right now um but yeah it kind of threw the sleeping schedule out a little bit i got obviously the late night friday night got woken up this morning by uh, like 4 30 in the morning by um, more blah, blah, blah. nah no nah, yeah. she wouldn't need to go to the bathroom <laughs> um ali was blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not one to see there is just a whole lot of bombs going on in your house that is true yeah yeah, and then you know we're doing we're doing the whole countdown thing because obviously we're moving in two weeks. Yeah, so I'm looking at all the things that I should be packing that I'm just not doing at the moment. Yeah, but yeah, we're getting there. I did find internet though. Yay! My internet. So, um, my, one of my friends in Sydney is currently using them. They're called More. <laughs> Sorry, more. it's really hard to look look them up. It's like Google More Internet. I'm like, and it's like okay. I've got you. <laughs> you get some random shit, but apparently they um they offer gigabit internet in my area. From yeah, I'm and the brand new estate, you got the MBN to your face, and then and it's, and it's only a hundred bucks a month, so it's only slightly more expensive than what Ooh, I'm paying for now. That's pretty beautiful. A thousand megabits per second. That's yeah. that's sexual. MGB more question mark. That's an overused name of a company. More oh, super stoked. Yeah, that's pretty fantastic. Mind you, I'm pretty happy with the cable we have here in uh, the suburb that we are located in. Mm. But uh, Gigabit would be pretty sweet. Yeah, so it's a thousand down, fifty up, slightly faster up than what we've got. Yeah, and twice, <laughs> twice <laughs> <the> down. <laughs> Not too bad. Mm. I myself though, I've, I didn't have any vomiting, thankfully. But I've had a yeah. the busy yeah. weekend of wrestling. Give it time. Oh, I'll give, give it time. time. I'm fucking rooted. Um, yeah, so Friday I had a show over uh, in Fitzroy. Um, that was very cool. It was in this cool little like uh, retro bar. That was tons of fun. Yesterday we had two shows at Arrow on Swanston. And oh my dear God. Oh, what an absolute hassle yesterday was. Um, just some things out of our control, which was really inconvenient. Some tr- problems with the venue in general. Like... We go there, start setting up, and they go, you didn't pay. Like, yeah, we did. Here's a receipt. Well, the money hasn't cleared yet. Okay. 
So here's the receipt. You can't, you guys, you guys can't keep setting up. You has, you haven't paid. So then the company had to pay again and be like, well, the second that the first one clears, you're paying this back instantly. So then we have about an hour and a half to get everything set up before the show. So the, everything gets put together real quickly. The sound desk is hot garbage. The venue always has garbage AV, right? For some reason, it only like outputs to one set of speakers. Like some some um, inputs go there, some go behind, and that's about it. None, <clears throat> literally none of the AUX inputs registered so nothing could come in unless it was a microphone absolute poo <clears throat> so then because we didn't have time because normally even though it's shitty previously it was pretty plug and play as i could just plug my laptop into the board and it would work but it was not reading any input outside of an xlr so it's like fuck so i couldn't make it work so the for the first show in the afternoon i had no choice but to put my microphone onto my phone and that was how we made audio for the first for the first show Sounded like hot poo. I'm not very proud of it, but it's the only way I could have, I could have got it working. During the intermission, uh, during the, the break between two shows, we did we did some running, got some cables, and then I had to a second run because the cable they we were given was the wrong one. But that was a complete mix up, so it was no no one's no one's fault. Um, and then yeah, essentially I had to jerry rig this thing to go through it, read it as a microphone, but it's actually my laptop. And even then, because of the the daisy chain that we had to create, it was like plug on a plug on a plug on a plug. Um, it just f- had this gnarly feedback cable noise and I just couldn't get rid of it. So we just had to make it work the best we could. It was incredibly, incredibly frustrating. Good show though. And I've learned one thing and I've learned about this last week as well. Cause as, as we discussed last week, I have been made redundant from my, from my current role. Um, on a personal growth story, uh, impressively, even that news didn't rock me. Like I've, I've been able to remain very uh, emotionally centered, very calm, very understanding. I'm like, mm, yes, no, you know, I get it. Yes, mm. um, and then additionally, like so, I've, 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 I with the with the as my body now is fully aware of my Ritalin and how it works because I've been doing it for such a long time. Like it, it's doing exactly what it needs to do. But even then, with this sweet emotional maturity that I've gained over the last X amount of time, and you know, all these things, this resilience that I've built up in myself. Like I just don't, I just don't have this, you know, the, the same emotional response that I would have previously. So even yesterday when shit was like fucking crazy and stressful and things weren't working and things were broken. And I'm like, let's do what we can. Let's fix it the best we can. Da, 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 da. Really like, you know, realist and optimistic. And it was really fucking weird. Very proud of myself on a complete side note. Saying that though, got home at two o'clock on month, on Friday night tired uh slept woke up at six to get back into the city got home at three last night i did get to have a sleep in this morning which is not too bad like about 10 30 11 and uh now i'm doing this and then i'm off to a gig tonight i have to go see sleep token really cool metal band so i'm very excited to see them and then back to work for a week which you know i'm not going to give them too 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 much hard work because <laughs> um what are they gonna do make me redundant uh so yeah yeah that's fine had two interviews last week an interview another interview on tuesday um yeah, it turns out I might be okay. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I might be okay, Max. Just maybe. Nice. Yeah. Still scary times, but it's not too bad. On a positive note, though, I have been able to play some games, though. Now, the one, the, first, the big one that we'll talk about uh, is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So big thank you to the team over at, I almost said Energy Australia, at uh, EA Australia. Uh, they provided us a review code of this uh, of this title on the PS5. It came through Friday morning. So I was able to play a little bit in the afternoon before I left for the wrestling. Played a little bit yesterday morning uh, and some a little bit today as well. So I'm mostly not really far in it. So my thoughts are very preliminary. Uh, Max, you put a lot more of it than in time of it than I have. So the story of this one, it continues approximately five years after the events of a Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, So the big old MacGuffin, which was the the cube of Jedi names, which got munted at the end, does have some little repercussions coming into this. Um, Cal Kestis is all uh, emo-y. He's real sad boy energy, which I personally appreciate because I like like me some good sad boy energy. Um... He's, you know, you can tell he's sad because he has a beard and scars on his face. Um, and he has just this like dour demeanor. Uh, yeah. And then you go off on these galactic adventures. 
at this moment in time, because I'm very fucking tired, I can't quite recall what the motivations of where I'm going. Because the, the first area is in Coruscant, which is the big uh, city planet that you see in uh, episodes one, two, and three. Um, which, because this is set between the events of three and four, I love it because it gets all these little uh, nods and homages and references to the prequel trilogy, which many people hate. Which, you know, a lot of people turn around on it now that the, that the sequel trilogy sucks so much bumhole. Um, but yeah, I've always been a bit of a mark for the uh, for the prequel trilogy. So to go to Coruscant and then go into like the slums of it and see the Jedi Temple build, you know, drabbed in uh, in Empire shit. And it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. But if I, what, what is the main story beat? Right? I, I, for the life of me, it just, it's not coming out of my brain. My brain. Uh, one, of the, one of the senators in Coruscant has... That's right. Um fucking essentially the military data that Saul Guerrero wants that's right that's right yeah that's, pr- that's pretty much you yeah, remember Saul Guerrero was part of it yeah yeah so Max you got a kick out of this because of it's um, you know Dark Souls light uh, combat system yeah and I've, I got um, a kick out of it for the Star Wars so how are well, you finding it's this funny. one it's funny so I've always said I'm not a huge Star Wars guy except mm. when it comes to the Star Wars games I'm a huge fan of the Star Wars games Turns out, just doing cool lightsaber shit's cool. Yeah, it is. Uh, this does what every sequel does, and to a degree annoys me. Um, you spend a whole game playing as this character, leveling him up, making him stronger. He's gained five years of experience, but forgotten how to do everything. Yeah, no, yeah. All those stances that you learned in the first game, don't worry about them. You get yeah. them. Thankfully, you get them pretty quick here. You do get them pretty quick. <clears throat> so you you start off with the single blade and the and the dual blade. Uh, you don't get the two blades until like, to, like about half an hour in. So you get it pretty quickly. Yeah, so you, you come in with the single blade, and then you, you get the double the the Darth Maul double end. I want to say double ended, but that sounds yeah. sexual. Uh, the the du- and the then you staff. the staff, and then you go into the dual wield um, a little bit yeah. later. But thankfully, you don't like in the first game. You had to go like find a table later in the game, and you might miss it. You got to kind of go sideways to get it but here it's just like it just happens throughout the first like 45 minutes of gameplay which is he really totally good. remembers he's able to do it he goes he's like, oh, yeah, he, goes, can, he holds it and then he goes oh yeah and just remembers there's a whole other side of it <clears throat> but there's like at least from my memory there's a, a very different skill tree here than there was previously yeah yeah which which i which i already like because yeah for i myself like i'm using a single blade in the dual wield you know the single blade is a really good balance sort of uh setup with you know good defense good attack the staff or the you know, setup is really good for defensive um play and then the dual wield is really good for like super attack heavy so for me i find the balance of the single and the and the, and the dual wield the best for how i want to play so like especially with as a jedi i might want to fucking run in and lightsaber shit and just deflect bullets occasionally but a very aggressive very um, I, run the, I run the exact same setup as you i run single and jewel yeah never use single though <laughs> but kind of just exclusively <clears throat> jewel but um i'm kind of specced into at the moment um i'm specced into mind trick yeah and i have mind trick mastery so i can pretty much do yeah. i can pretty much mind trick anyone except for black bosses yeah, you're just like this is. I'm not the droid you're looking for. Like, you're not even. A, you, yeah, yes, you're not a droid. I'm like, ah, stab. Just like get that guy. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm I'm only on the second planet. I just got to the second planet. Um, <clears throat> you're about to. You're almost finished the second one, aren't you? I'm almost finished the second planet. Well, what I believe to be almost finished the second planet. I could be. I could be horrendously wrong. I've played for about two and a half hours, three hours. Um, <clears throat> I'm enjoying my time so far. The combat's still fantastic uh it has been improved on since the first game the, the story's getting there it, it, it's a it's a slow start obviously with a five-year uh jump uh i'm <coughs> playing on performance mode me too yeah so what so i have i have had noticeable texture pops yeah so well why not, like, we'll discuss this. Noticeable <laughs> texture pops. so there is a lot of conversation going right now around the performance of a jedi for uh, uh jedi survivor on pc it's fucked just it's because it's running de novo <laughs> yeah it's just collectively <laughs> crm bullshit um, where on playstation 5 at least it's not as gnarly, but it's not great. So well, there's, there's been a few comparison sites that do um, comparisons between the three systems. Yeah. Uh, that being PC, Xbox, PlayStation. Uh, PlayStation 5 is the most stable. 
which makes sense is what I'm seeing. So yeah. for myself, I, I do get frame drops. I had a couple in some cutscenes. I'm getting a lot of screen tearing, especially up the top of the screen, just that, that sort of judder. So, so I think there's a lot of frame timing sort of problems. Um, very similar to yourself, like there is a bit of pop in, obviously playing in the performance mode. I haven't tried it in the in the visual mode, um, simply because this game, the way its combat works, you want the double time in the frame rates. Mm. So I'm not going to go to the quality. I'll stick solely on performance. And buddy, buddy, what's in the chat says console greater than PC confirmed. And I think. It's very interesting. There was a time where the console ports were the fucked ones uh, because everyone was, everything was spec to PC and then moved over to console. It seems like it's going the other way. It seems like everyone's specking for consoles and then the port to PC sucks bum. You're a PC person. What do you think the fucking problem is? There's just so much variation on a PC. But hasn't that always been the case like, though? Like that's the, that's the big issue at the moment, but... Um, from what I've seen here with Jedi specifically, it's a big, the, the issues are on people running multi-threaded systems, mm. um, seems to be the, the real kicker. Um, and then you've got like, you know, let's take, um, cause I obviously got a new PC a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's take, um, Last of Us, for instance, it uses almost no CPU usage but uses way too much virtual RAM mm -hmm. on your GPU. So it just sucks to dry. There's no balance. It's all or nothing on either one or the other. And they need to find some kind of balance. Now, obviously, there's something going on because this year, I don't think we've had a, a, P a PC launch mm -hmm. that's been favorable to anyone. Yeah, because yeah, looking you're looking at the last major, you know, last handful of major AAA releases on PC that are cross platform. And yeah, it is, it's a rough space to be in. So, well, you know, as MGB in the chat, Forspoken broken at launch, Wild Hearts broken at launch, yeah. Hogwarts Legacy broken at launch. Wolong was horrendous at, on PC at launch. Last of Us broken at launch. Yeah. Jedi Survivors broken at launch. Well, cause yeah, right. uh, MGB in the chat here says, I'm starting to wonder if spending thousands of dollars on a PC for games isn't worth it. And I would kind of agree. Now, I, mostly because I don't play a lot on PC anyway. Like my PC is super fucking old. It's a first gen Ryzen. It's a 970 graphics card. Like it is fucked. Like my PC is so old. Like it doesn't run a whole lot because I don't play a lot of games on it. I would like to upgrade it. I just can't justify the cost. And I have a console. That's where I get them. That's where I play my, most of my games, where I get most of my games. So I don't really think too hard about PC. So I'm not the best audience to have something to say around, um, around that. But, you know, you spent, you just spent a chunk of change, but you, your, you you did because your PC fucking died. So it's very yeah, different my, my, between... Yeah, my blow up. I, yeah. Yeah, you didn't upgrade to then play for more games. You just bought a good PC because your other one shat itself. Yeah. But... Well, like, it's like it, it, for next week, for instance, like Redfall, I know Xbox game, mm. Redfall's launching next week and there's a few of us who are interested in playing it and we're like, do we get it on Xbox, suffer through the 30 frames or do yeah, we yeah. risk the PC download to see if it's slightly better. <laughs> well, it's on Game Pass, so it don't matter. Yeah. Um, that is the one advantage of Game Pass, I guess, but we'll, yeah. oh, we'll have more to say about Microsoft shortly. But um, no, it is an interesting it's an interesting thing to sort of look at it that way because there are like mo oh, so many games are coming out rough at the moment, um, just a collectively. Now, I do think a lot of it is post-COVID hangover as, you know, a lot of these games were made during isolation and you couldn't all come together and do stuff so that does slow down the production and with the seeming pressure to get it out when you say you will which is good in some ways but bad in another way um, i don't know in the, you know in the history uh, like in the last few years there hasn't been a problem delaying stuff yeah like that but like it's not ready just don't like <clears throat> it's yeah but the difference here is like yeah, you can delay things. I believe this is this game was was delayed as well from memory. I think a lot, a lot because of the nature of the way games have been made in the last couple of years, there is a 
sort of foundational problem mm. because a lot of those key early starts, like when everything starts, it is such a heavily collaborative experience, at least my assumption, is that with the restriction on people not being in the same space, the skeleton of these games are having problems. Now, granted, using, you know, back to full, uh, to Survivor, Fallen Order had a rough PC run too. Um, the console from memory ran pretty well um, on PS4, at least from, from once again, my, my untrustworthy memory. Pardon me. But it's also, you know, would delaying it longer have helped at all? Like, I know that there was a substantive day zero and day one patch for the game. Um, and f- from what I heard, the big one of the big patches was a concern as it may just entirely wipe your save file. So any any of the pre-release players did have some concerns around possibly just losing everything, <clears throat> which is it's interesting. But yeah, apart from minor graphical problems um, and some stuttering here and there, which I, I certainly hope things that can be removed. Like overall, I'm having a pr- still pretty good time with it. Like it's not... Thankfully, it's not let PC level fucked on on PS5, so I'm still able to play it and enjoy it. Yeah, there's a there's a spot that you're coming up to on the second planet where you essentially get a hideout, and there's a door that opens in the hideout into like a, what is what is a sewer system essentially, mm. and it's literally for for me it has been a grey wall, and then as I'm walking through the tunnel, the textures pop in. Oh, to, you know, like it's. It's like a, it's a brutal pop that lasts about three seconds. I have to, I'll have to let you know if as, I spot it as it as it gradually changes, <laughs> it fills in. Wow. Um, but again, I think that's the only noticeable one that I've seen. Um, there's there's probably definitely been more, but they've been minor enough to just mm. be in the periphery and not not bother <clears> me too much. Um, I haven't had any like huge frame drops in 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 where it would matter too much like in combat or anything like that yeah. i do think the um i had an audio sync issue at one point in one of the cutscenes. um but other than that it, it's been pretty good pretty sure the cutscenes run at a lower they frame do rate so the, anyway. the frame rate the, the frame rate of the cutscenes is the 30 because you cannot yeah <clears throat> when they go from pre-rendered cutscene through to in uh, in gameplay cutscenes like you can see the t- uh, you, there's a clear mm. shift like it's almost like it's not quite a hitch but it's a little bit of it like at least for me it is but i guess the the jumping from 30 to 60 would appear as a hitch so it goes, mm. and then it kind of goes at that higher frame i go ah okay cool and there is that sharp um you know quite a substantial resolution drop so the things do have that bit of a jank not jankness because it still looks fantastic there are times like i'm snapping photos left and right of this game a to make cool thumbnails and just sort of being like oh man this is cool oh cool you know like look at all these different things um you know which is which is fun for me which is which mm. is great oh noob in the chat hello how you doing i am good my friend how you doing i've been and seeing you some... around the wrestle chats hope you're doing well had some had some slight issues with one of the earlier f- force related puzzles okay so like to not no spoilers essentially you, you you're doing uh essential battery swaps to like open draw bridges and stuff mm-hmm. and it was very obvious what i needed to do i needed to you essentially have two batteries and three battery points so the first bridge requires one battery the second bridge required two and you had to bring both the batteries across um and you essentially were force pulling and force pushing them into positions once I put the first one in, it's like, hey, I want to force pull this one out of the socket to put it in the other one that I need, that I clearly need to do. And it's like, no, nah, sorry, wouldn't let me pull it out. And then I took one step to the left and it's like, yep, yeah, works now. Oh, oh, you're in the zone. Yeah, cool. <laughs> you, you, it's like, okay. So some, some of the, some of the, um, the aiming uh, when, when using force powers has been a pain, but not too not too game breaking just yeah. minor annoyances <clears throat> yeah but the game the game is super fun um, I'm enjoying it just as much as I did the first one part of that is just that that souls like combat which I, which I yeah, went for which which I, I, I think I mean, I, I'm sure we just when we when we reviewed Fallen Order it's uh, it, we did discuss it then as well in terms of like the combat f- is really really well done for lightsabers like mm. it's 
because it is so you know dark back forwards and it's a little flashy and it really benefits like the 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 souls esque um yeah, game uh, fight sure. system is is brilliant it can, brilliantly connected to um to to lightsaber like combat yeah. and i ha- like i have such a blast like little f- fucking twirls and shit which always mark me out real hard um <clears throat> It's tons of fun. And as I mentioned before, like on the second planet, you just find a bunch of battle droids, which which I love because battle droids are stupid. And But I think they're a really fun enemy just to obliterate. And there's a really good scene. I'm sure I saw, I saw it on Twitter originally and then I've just experienced it in the game. Like you're climbing across a cliff and you see this droid and they're just like to looking out into the, off this cliff edge and they start talking to themselves and having this full-blown conversation about how lucky this droid is to have this position where they get to, you know, work at this cliff and just look at this vista all day, you know, and then shoot people when I need to. Maybe if I do good enough, they'll promote me. Oh, wait, if they promote me, then I can't look over this cliff anymore. Oh, this is a massive dilemma. Then you stab him. It's awesome but yeah we're still very 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 early days on uh jedi uh, jedi survivor we will have more to say over the coming week and possibly the week after uh so one thing i did spot though uh while playing survivor is there was a particular voice actor i went you'll sound familiar because i've just I, obviously just coming off um horizon and forbidden west uh burning shores which i haven't finished by the way um the voice actor for Catalo is also in uh, Jedi Survivor, and which is really jarring because obviously just playing F- Forbidden West, coming across, I'm like, huh? It's very good. But yeah, Forbidden West, I played a bit more of it. I have expanded further into the game. I have begun building the um, the relationship with my companion. Uh, now, I know there's been a whole lot of con- controversy across uh, the socials about an interaction that happens between Aloy and this companion. Uh, we haven't got there yet. I'm aware of, well, I, I, I'm aware of it, obviously. You know, the th- interesting thing about it is it appears that it's entirely a choice-based scenario. You could choose not to do that if you don't want to. But I think it also then further reiterates the greater conversation around user reviews. Everyone's like, oh man, you can't trust critics. Critic reviews are, are, are poo. You cannot trust user reviews. Like both of them. Like if if, if you people like it's the game is not a three point two whatever it was last it was from a user score. People are shit. Like I un it, it's fascinating. Like granted, I'm, what I'm about to say makes no sense. But like I don't feel the need to just blast my distaste for shit across the internet except for this podcast. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that hence the I know the irony of that statement. But <clears throat> are you implying that you're a microphone warrior and not a keyboard warrior? Oh, most definitely. Like I have my very controlled environment, but like I don't I don't feel the need to go complain on on Twitter. I, even if it's like even if there was something that I didn't like, right? In a movie, I'm like this goes against my morals values. Or I don't fucking care enough to go yell about it, like in a written form. Like all these people that have got the the are going to review bomb re- review bomb Horizon Forbidden West because of its um uh because it's woke agenda well a you're wrong and two like that's all uh, b like i keep doing that always a and two and b you're absolutely wasting your time you have nothing better to do really says the guy who has nothing better to but do this show every week but like even with atomic heart like i had a lot of problem with how that game sort of portrayed very sexist old stereotypes i talked about it on here and that was it because this is my platform to do so it's part of why we do what we do and like i'll talk about it in other ways and like in conversations but i'm not going to go review bomb the game or yeah, everyone should fucking not you know ban this game <laughs> like have the autonomy within yourself to go you know what it's not for me and you step away and that's it but burning shores is really cool it's very pretty um according to there was digital foundry like a big part of the game because it's not obviously not on PS4. Apparently, it's due to the performance requirements of the game. It is very pretty and it runs very well. Um, and it's, apparently, it's the clouds that are what so demanding. Mm-hmm. I guess because you do spend a lot of time flying. Because as 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 uh, we discussed last week, um, <clears throat> uh, I was trying to thought. Yeah, so because it's, because as we're discussing last week, how it is essentially just Avatar: The Way of Water in Horizon, even down to you eventually getting a bird that you can fly and then swim underwater with. 
That is absolutely Avatar. So I'm glad. Um, actually, I'm not glad. That movie fucking blows. So I'm <laughs> a bit of disappointed in the direct connection that uh, 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 that Horizon have to that Pooh movie. But yeah, it's still pretty good. You though, Max. How's, how's that? Uh, how's that Final Fantasy going for? Yeah, so I now have like three creatures left in Final Fantasy 1 until I hit that platinum. So I will get to that at some point this week. Uh, I have started on Final Fantasy 2 where they decided to just be like, you know, character XP was dumb in the first game. So let's just fucking get rid of that. And the only XP you'll gain is for your equipped items or magic you, that you're using throughout combat. Uh, I forgot that I hated Final Fantasy 2. <laughs> Uh, Final Fantasy 2 is dumb, <laughs> in my opinion. <clears throat> it's one of the weaker of the titles. Mm. Um, so I have skipped over most of it. Um, I say that I've played like three and a half hours of it. I think I'm about halfway through. The games are really, really short. Well, yeah, as you were saying, uh, like you kind of forgot how quick old Super Nintendo games are, especially yeah. nowadays where games are just getting longer and longer and longer. Yeah, for sure. But it's still a solid fucking remaster of these old titles. Um the first thing I do when I play them, though, is I swap everything to the old school mode, mm-hmm. except for the visuals. The visuals can stay nice and crisp. I don't need the fake the fake CRT lines, <laughs> but I do love the fucking original score. Yeah, and the original music. They like that that sixteen bit, Crunch, crunchy pit. sort of. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Um, and the other thing that I haven't yeah I haven't poured too much time into Pixel Master Remaster this week. Um, I've kind of dabbled in two and three. Um, the other thing that I've been playing is Dead Island 2. Yes, 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 yes. So huge shout out to the team at uh, Play on Australia. I'm still feeling the same things that I said last week, that mm. it, it just feels dated. That It seems like we're, we're past that. Um, it, it, it has everything in it that those, those games had like 10 years ago. Mm. <laughs> but it's still fun. It's still fun. Um... I'm I'm an idiot though. Uh, at oh, one point, there's what I felt to be too quick of a flash on my screen to explain that I hold a certain button down to bring up my fucking weapon menu because mm-hmm. for ages I was running around without a weapon and not able to equip one because I've just I missed the fucking uh, the quick notification of just hold triangle, bro, and you can fucking equip any weapon in your stash. So for ages, I'm like, how the fuck do I equip? <laughs> so I, I missed the on-screen instruction that lasted like what felt like a split second. <laughs> and then it's like, you haven't been using a weapon for ages. For ages. Maybe I'll just fucking flash this hot hey, tip heads again. heads up. Uh, you can use weapons. The whole game's built on um, weapons. Probably should use a weapon. So once I worked that out, which is, you know, my own stupidity, I, I don't have weapons again. It makes it so much fun. <laughs> Um, I'm still very early in it. I haven't played too much. I'm kind of just running around smacking zombies. It's it's just fun. It it's very reminiscent of those games. Is it channeling that sort of original dying light energy and love that you had? Yeah, yeah, yeah very so. much so. Yeah, well, I have it installed. I haven't touched it yet myself. Um, I did pick up though. I picked up uh, uh, the DLC for the Cult of uh, Cult of the Lamb. So Massive Monster uh, yeah. have released some uh, free DLC, which if you had finished the game and 100% of it, like I had, uh, it essentially adds a whole bunch of stuff. So you get uh, new uh, new followers, like new follower visuals, which is great. Uh, it also essentially re-steps all of the, the uh, bishops. Mm-hmm. So you meet this new big god thing who's like, hey, fight them all again and give me their shit. So that's fun. So I'm running through them all again. Um, but like there's, there's, there's a bit of a change to the room layouts. Some of the, uh, some of the fixes, sorry, some of the bugs from the original, cause we played it pre-release as well, where sometimes, you know, the individual, the, the particular follower that you wanted, you need, or you had a mission that you needed to do with them at the church, you, you know, they just wouldn't go in. So you couldn't get to them. Mm. Um, you know, there was sometimes where it would just get stuck in little, these like, loops where it just wouldn't trigger that seems to be gone there's a stack more decorations there's a lot more creative um changes to the area and like your main hub area there's new buildings there's new new branches on the skill tree uh and it's yes yeah, it's, it's the loop in cult of the lamb is 
so fantastic. It is absolutely a pleasure to go back to it. Like, I'm more than happy to run like the same biomes again or the same little, you know, the four different areas. And it's just, it's just instantly came back into my, into my muscle memory. I was like, oh yeah. You know, it's just came back like that, like this, that real quick, that quick hack and slash duck dive, dip, duck dive and dodge. Um, and the characters are still adorable. There's a photo mode now. So you can like really zoom in and take these, you know, photos of these absolutely adorable and, and great character designs. Um, the bishops, once you beat them, they do return into, they return to like a follower form and you can have them join your, your cult, um, which is cool. So I have Leshy or Leshy uh, as one of my followers now. And I'm moving into the second area, which is fun. There is this, so there's almost like a new currency called uh, God Tear or God Tears, and when you do beat the 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 mini bosses in each of the areas, um, they do drop them. And there's also this new area called Purgatory where you go and everything freezes, so like your um, your cult will not like get hungry or lose um, um, uh, follow fellowship or following whatever. Mm, nothing um, will progress. Nothing will progress. So you can just go and run it get a bunch of gear, uh, get a bunch of like uh, resources, etc., and then come back, which is, is a really good way to do it. Um, just It's a fun little like, um, very similar, I guess, to the sort of like that tower mode. I'm trying to think what the, what was it called? I'm just going to call it tower mode. So it's just like, just start running through them, hit the boss, then come back with all your resources. It's, it's really good fun. You can, you can do that like once per in-game day. Um yeah, so and there's and one of the other things you can do is there's the ability to unlock all the remaining rituals that you didn't get in your first run because you know if everything was the one or the other. So mm. now you can go and pick up the ones you haven't got. So you can essentially have access to all of them presumably by the end, which is pretty cool. Uh, there are more tarot cards that you can pick up throughout the world. You can buy pick them up from all the old stalls and there's also a number you can find throughout your runs. Um there's new capes, so you can get those new little buffs and stuff as you go in. Uh, there's new ways to master the the weapons that you have. So if you really prefer a particular weapon type, you can set it up in a way that you'll get obviously additional benefits from using that weapon, as well as the ability to if you do enter a if you do enter a um, a, a run and the weapon that spawns isn't the one you want, you can actually like you know, essentially recycle it and it'll re-upload a new one. It will be at a slight, a level down, but it might be able to get the one one you want, which is pretty cool. Because I'm a big fan of either like the claws, a big honking axe, and I like the dagger sometimes as well. Um, I do like either like big, big energy smashes or like quick little movements. I kind of like sit on either end. But the DLC is amazing. It's still adorable. I'm really enjoying doing the runs again because, you know, they're like seven to 10, 15 minute runs. So you can just do a couple in a go and go, and you just feel happy about yourself. So yeah, I've cleared out the first area, as I mentioned, mm, pretty much cleared out the second one. I'm just about to go do the boss again. Fuck, it's such a good game, man. It's such a good game. Did you end up ever finishing it? No, nah, I'm on the, like the last, uh, the last boss. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's, it, it's very much a max game, which is which mm. super weird. No, I enjoyed my time with it. Yeah. But other than that, I don't think I've played much else, really. Hmm. No, I think that might be it. Let me do a quick check of the of the app. The app's like, this is what you've been playing. Oh, more WWE 2K23, obviously. And yeah, that's really about it. All right, let's get on the section. We call Inform the Players. We tell you about what happened this week in PlayStation. So as always, let's kick some stuff off with the Sony-related news. Uh, PlayStation Plus Essentials games were once again leaked. And then very quickly confirmed by PlayStation the day later. Uh, we will be getting Grid Legends on PS5, PS4, Chivalry 2, PS5, PS4, and Descenders on PlayStation 4. Uh, they will be dropping on the second Tuesday of next month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Chivalry 2, I've heard pretty, great things about. Pretty lackluster. Pretty lackluster. Oh, comparatively very lackluster. <laughs> Over the last couple of months. Yeah. Um, Chivalry 2 is probably the big one. Chivalry, Chivalry was hilarious. Yeah, isn't that, it's big. a... Battle, big battlefield style combat but like close like combat med medieval medieval yeah apparently you can like, just, like just decapitate people and shit and instead of guns and knives you got swords and crossbows let's go easy oh well because there's four in this one I'll, I'll jump in this one so the second one is a, the old subscriber count so apparently 
according to Sony. They've gained 1 million PS Plus subscribers from January through to the end of March 2023, so in a three-month window. So uh, so this uh, collectively has put it at, a, at around about 47.4 million PS Plus subscribers, which is not too bad. Having experienced a small dip earlier in the year, the growth sees the number of playing, uh, paying accounts return to what appears to be the service's general peak, which is just around the 50 million mark. It, it has never gone above 48 million members, according to Q3 of fiscal uh, tw- year 2021. So it's around about where it normally sits, which is good as in it's not you know dropping too hard, but it's bad because it should really be ideally increasing. But you know, it's, it's pretty good point. And uh, as Buddy Watson in the chat mentions, console sales are going up, which as does add to the next piece of news. And then we'll talk about the both. Yeah, so Sony has managed to beat its uh, own sales, uh, PS5 sales estimates to record a total of 6.3 million PlayStation 5 consoles shipped in Q4 period of fiscal 2022. In terms of revenue, this makes it Sony's best ever fourth quarter earnings, beating out the same period recorded last year. Yeah, so... To coincide with these two things, with everything requiring PS Plus these days, plus the you know the essential games, plus the new deluxe and extra tiers. So anyone that's picking up a PS Five now, I'm pretty comfortable that like they're casually sort of players, I guess. Or- oh, I forgot to put in the chat. Don't uh, put in the the news doc. Don't forget that the PlayStation Collection ends in like a week or two it does so if you have not claimed those games please claim those games <clears throat> um yeah so for those that have, i think anyone that's picking up a ps5 now is likely a little bit more casual quote unquote so the idea of the ps plus ec- uh, 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 extra or deluxe tiers might be of benefit to them so like as you and i because of the nature of what we do very rarely are there any games that come to that service that we haven't already played or experienced. So we go, eh. But anyone that's coming on board, like they just buy a PS5 and they go, oh, hang on, look at all this. Like my stepfather just bought a PS5 and he's utterly blown away. I think extra is the tier that, that's the sweet spot. Though. Yeah, deluxe is really not necessary Del- here. Deluxe is very much not worth in my opinion, not worth the money that yeah, that it, most definitely that it is. not. Um, they're really not supporting like the old, the classics as much as they should, and with the, with our lack of PS Now um, online support, so we don't get any of the PS3 titles, which are the ones that I probably want to play more than anything, which is a bum. Uh, but yeah, no, it's certainly good that they're still moving a lot of units. It's very int- you know we we discussed this as well as a lot as well, and Buddy might be able to help this out. Like there, there seems to be a lot more active movement of playstations than there are xboxes at the moment um or at least in a recorded standpoint so microsoft haven't actively disclosed their console numbers in what feels like a quite a while um now obviously with their focus to be more around game pass which even then they don't disclose those numbers as a lot either it is interesting to see that there is such a movement on ps5 where you would think the appeal of something like Game Pass would help move more Xboxes. So Buddy confirms, at least from their experience in, in their industry they're a part of, uh, massively and for some time. I'm not quite sure what the ratio is, but I did see, I think it was Japan, where there was like 400, I'm, I'm slowly, highly exag- underselling it, there was like 500 xboxes sold in them in this particular month but there was like thousands of x of playstations yeah but it's 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 really i mean microsoft has never been correct oh, yeah no, no it's, it's very it's very much a very specific slice of the pie where yeah. xbox like it was part of the reason jrpgs never, never really had a lot of run on um on uh, microsoft consoles is because that the, the demo is just not that supported. Like no one yeah. really moves. Microsoft doesn't move the needle for many people in that space. Um, but we're at, we'll be talking about uh, Microsoft in just a second. But before we do that, uh, Twisted Metal got its first release, tra- uh, first teaser trailer this week. So it is uh, launching July twenty seventh uh, 
It is coming to Peacock in the US, but it is coming to Stan here in Australia, I believe. Or was it Binge? No, I think it was Stan. I think it's coming to Stan. Bin- Binge is HBO, so Stan might be. Yeah, I did I did get tagged in a in a thing about it on the Facebook. So let me have a quick squiz. It'll it'll tell me in just a moment. Uh please hold. But uh, well, while but, you're while you're looking, this uh, it was looking. totally Stan. It was totally Stan? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, um, which yeah, which is ten, not bad. 10, 10 30 minute episodes. With a, with an action comedy vibe, and mm. Anthony Mackie. Yeah, look, I'm. I uh, have, <clears throat> I have zero fucking interest in this. Yeah, look, we'll watch it. I mean, we certainly won't be doing the more the players weekly deep dive on it. We might do one for the pilot, and then maybe a se- and then probably likely a season conclusion. Um, but yeah, the only thing that gets me excited is MGB points out in the chat. Uh, Samoa Joe is the bo- as the body for Sweet Tooth, but then you've got um, the dude from. Uh, Arrested Development. Um, the guy doing the voice. Um, you're not helping me, Max. No, because I don't watch Arrested Development. Fuck. Uh... Oh my god. You're sitting in front of a computer. You yeah, no, but it's it's more like it's more fun faster. to to like push it out of my brain. It. Uh, what up, nerds? Hey, uh, <laughs> Craig. Um, yeah, either way, so it's got him in it as well, which is interesting. I'm not, like, he's he did Batman in the Lego Batman. Um, You're talking about Will Arnett? Will Arnett! There we go. Yeah, Will Arnett's doing the voice of Sweet Tooth. So it's just, all right, cool, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm really not excited for this show. I will watch it <laughs> purely for the benefit of, purely for the show purposes. Yeah. Uh, it'll most definitely be the third in the most, you know, in terms of PlayStation Studios produ- like productions, well, PlayStation productions, you know, you've got Uncharted and Last of Us and Twisted Metal. Last of Us number one, Uncharted number two. I haven't even seen Twisted Metal yet. Pretty sure it's already going to be three. With utter bold, confidence. Bold claim. Bold claim. Yeah. But look, we've made some bold claims in the past, Max. As is Microsoft. They have been making the absolute boldest claim that like this ABK deal is going through un- no questions asked. They've essentially spent the better part of the last year just telling us everything about what their plans are for when it goes through because at no point it appears that they ever thought it would not happen. And it appears there may be a bump in that roadmap. Yeah, so the deal has been blocked by the UK's Competition and Markets Authority. Uh, And since then, Microsoft has just gone on the offensive. Uh, In an interview with BBC, President Brad Smith has said the move was, quote, bad for Britain and has marked the firm's, quote, darkest day in our four decades in the country. (laughs) All right. Um, So with an appeal pending, uh, analysts are insinuating it's unlikely to shift the opinion of regulators. Um so Microsoft has turned to heaping political pressure on the UK government instead. Uh, Smith, once again, has said, quote, people are shocked, people are disappointed, and people's confidence in the technology in the UK has been severely shaken. There is a clear message here. The European Union is a more attractive place to start a business than in the UK, end quote. That's a, that's a uh, big Smith- reach. <laughs> <laughs> Smith proceeded to pile on threats claiming that Microsoft could, could reconsider its investment into the UK and that the country needs to, quote, look hard at the role of the CMA and the regulatory structure. The CMA has disagreed with the, quote, we want to create an environment where a whole host of different companies can p- compete effectively, can grow and innovate, uh, and can grow and innovate, Chief Executive Sarah Cardell said. So the big thing here is it didn't get blocked because they were concerned that... Yeah, they became, yeah of abk as a whole they're like it's gonna fuck with cloud gaming that's the big thing they're like they're gonna get king they're gonna have all this stuff for what already is a what microsoft already have a great cloud gaming system in place the azure yeah like it it works well it does its job properly and they're concerned that if they get abk there's going to be more content available to them and it's going to lower the incentive for innovation mm. and um, competition in that space. 
I kind of agree. I completely agree, actually. So, um, <clears throat> what's very interesting? Yeah. This feels this feels very like El Capone, and that like he didn't get done for all these shit horrible shit. He's only got done in tax evasion. Like it kind yeah. of feels the same boat. Like we can't get them for the Call of Duty stuff, but let's get them on the technicality. And it's kind of got that energy. And I disagree everything with Smith saying here. This is just someone crying foul. I do still have the very firm stance that I do. Be- I'm glad that this is having its roadblocks because the big thing here is is um, precedent. Everything that this will happen, it will alter the precedent on these purchases and how much can something go for. Because as we discussed before, if this deal goes through, any other deal that happens is lesser than this purchase. So it has to go through because Microsoft were allowed to do it with ABK. Pardon me, but no, I agree with you. Like focusing on the on the on the cloud gaming because right now, admittedly, even our focus on this con- on this conflict on this acquisition has been solely around the games and current. And the only future that we've discussed is the future of Call of Duty, which comparatively to every ramification within this acquisition has great long-term effects. So I kind of applaud the UK for looking ahead in terms of the of the cloud gaming approach because that appears yeah. to be not the active discussion right now, which tells me, at least from a surface level, that the UK have looked into this a bit more holistically and a bit more of a wider yeah. viewpoint, um, so which is certainly great. Obviously, the FTC still hasn't made their decision with their case to yeah. begin on the 2nd of August. Uh there are countries that have already approved the acquisition. Mm-hmm. So South Africa, Japan, Chile, Brazil, Saudi Arabia, and Serbia have all been, yep, we don't care, do whatever you want. Activision Blizzard have gone, we're going to appeal it, we're going to work with Microsoft. But at the end of the day, they don't care because apparently they're set to get paid $3 billion bucks anyway. That is correct. So whether the, whether the deal goes ahead or it doesn't, they get $3 billion. And I, I, their, share, their shareholders are still going to make money regardless yeah. of what happens here. So my understanding was essentially it's like a um, like a, like a, a contract break, right? Like, hey, if worst comes to worst, you still get paid out this much. So it still fucking sucks. And Microsoft is still going to take quite a substantial hit. $3 billion is a lot. Now, granted, um, you know, Microsoft make that in whatever, like 45 seconds, apparently. So it's interesting. It's brutal. And as as uh, Buddy mentions here in the chat, with, Red, with the conversation around Redfall, its first party exclusives, and uh, the fa- and the beginnings of this fail Activision deal, it is a big L for Microsoft. Public in- image is turning on them, finally. And that's most, uh, we'll have a discussion around that for a little bit as well. So PlayStation have always, have, have, especially in the last number of years, have had a very bad public image, whether it be their, their radio silence around what they're doing. This definitely... We, there's this long conversation around arrogant Sony from the PS3 time. And I would say that there is a perception that there's that arrogance of PlayStation right now, but it's very much, I, I don't believe they're arrogant. I believe they're confident at the moment. Their sales are doing well. They don't have to talk. They don't have to say anything at the moment until they need to. And then when they do, they back it up. And that's the big difference. I think with the, with the, with the arrogant quote unquote Sony of PS3, they weren't really able to back up the shit that they were saying or the, the backing up the arrogance was unearned arrogance, unearned confidence. We're here. They're like, well, we're not going to say anything. We're confident, you know, because our games, games come out and they're always in game of the year conversations. Um, their console, your console's doing, doing numbers. Like we don't have to worry. We're not really worried, you know? And Jim Ryan and, and the and the team at PlayStation or team specifically, um, I don't we don't know what their intentions were around combating the ABK acquisition. Now, is if it's one of those things where it was going to happen regardless, and all they wanted to do is delay it, they've successfully delayed it. I would argue that if it wasn't for their persistence. It might we might be having a very different conversation right now, but yeah, well, it's with that in mind, most, Microsoft- of, most of PlayStation's discourse around this deal has been has nothing to do with cloud gaming. That's also very true. So you know, it's um, because one of the other one of the other things that I saw online was their concern that um, if ABK is acquired by Microsoft, 
um, they're like Games Pass will, the cost will increase, mm. which makes sense. It's like probably at, should, at, probably at, should at, increase now. At some point, it's going to increase. Like yeah. no one's, no one has this idea that it's not going mm. to. Um, but yeah, it, but what, it, it's, but... It's, in, it's interesting that that for the last however many months this this since this deal was announced that everyone's big thing was like oh shit call of duty is going to become exclusive and they're just like fuck call of duty and out of nowhere they're like cloud which tell That's which once again as i That's mentioned which tells me these regulators are doing their fucking job like mm. they're supposed to be looking at the entire uh the entire transaction and be like where's the win you know what's the pros and what's the cons and it's very likely that within you know within that this they looked at that and went hey look this call of duty stuff isn't the isn't the main point here and i think because the communication that that playstation have chose have chosen to use is i think it's almost like a rally the troops sort of setup as yeah. in like they're essentially preaching to the gaming community the players because no one outside of gaming gives a flying fuck and if you tell those gamers that they're losing something and you know as we were discussing before gamers uh gamers tm uh are very loud and vocal about shit that mildly inconveniences them so if you can rally them behind them and fuel those console wars then they're going to be at a very clear advantage and it appears My that un- that's what they were trying to do but thankfully the uk saw through that and attacked it in a way that even i hadn't considered well my understanding is also that since this has been denied by the cma Microsoft has also already put into place 10-year deals similar to that of what they did with Call of Duty. Mm. They have done that with other cloud services for their titles to still appear on their services as well as their own. Yeah. Okay, well, there's yeah, like, there's well, a lot of concessions that Microsoft have had to make. They're like, they're like well, it worked for COD, so it, it should work here. Yeah. So yeah. to add to to add to what my point was around the 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 marketing uh, the the, percep- the public perception of PlayStation, Microsoft really kind of since like Games Pass has become a very prominent thing is they have had a really relatively upbeat and positive perception, as in you know that their entire gimmick at the moment is we're about the players. We the decisions that we make is about the people that come in and you know it, it's first. It's offering service. It's offering all these different benefits to the user. I would I think a lot of that yeah, I said at the time it was based in potential. Like, oh man, the, the games pass is great potential. It's all this and all these acquisitions could really deliver some great games. But what we're seeing in actuality is subpar gaming experiences we're having games that yes many of them were in production prior to the acquisition into the microsoft um, party structure they have still not delivered we talked about redfall right you know it's it's currently not performing to the like what should be the standard on a next generation console um halo was a hot mess outside of that they they really like any pardon me outside of halo microsoft have failed to deliver any first party title that was developed entirely within their first parties so the releases that they have done so far whether it be the likes of grounded um pestilence whatever it was whatever that one um a uh, 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 hi-fi rush and now the, the impending redfall the impending um starfield all of them were in production prior to the their their relevant their connected studios purchase so like it, it does kind of look like a, a interesting mismanagement whether before they came in on board or during uh th- their their ability to walk the walk is is failing behind their ability to talk what's your thoughts max um yeah no i i agree with i agree with what you're saying it's just they seem to be stuck and on and they 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 shit creek lack of paddle type Mm. situation where they have no idea what they're doing and instead of trying to work on themselves they're doing this 
bring other people in who already have a reputation. Now, granted, lately, ABK hasn't had the greatest. Um, but they're turning shit out, <laughs> at least. Um, mm. So they're just, they're just trying to put more numbers on the board. Yeah. So... What it feels like. As Buddy mentioned in the Buddy what's in the chat mentions, they did remove their one dollar trial for Games Pass, get that one month for dollar, which people exploit the living fuck out of. So Yeah. That makes sense. I mean that's been, that's also been running for what feels like years. Yeah, yeah, it feels like a very, very long time. Uh and they've also added they do have poor they have poor studio management, they need better actions than just buying what already exists. And we've discussed this previously at length. Um and I think this is probably one of the biggest biggest fall points here is that Microsoft's entire what appears their business model is buy someone else's successful shit and then kill it by accident just by by poor management and it feels that like this is really starting to bite them in the ass like there was enough it feels like there was enough time prior where like it wasn't as noticeable like oh okay well that's a bum because like i don't feel that outside of like forza there really hasn't been a super strong first party release like nothing that's that's you know, rocked the world in any way, which is very concerning in general. And then you look over at PlayStation's approach, which is buy them when they're small or actually let them do a test for us. We'll work with them in a capacity for say a year or so. And then if we like what we're doing, we'll pick them up, we'll support them and go from there. And we'll let, we'll have the studio grow within us. So they match the culture, they match the, the, the plan and it all comes together nicely and with a big bow on it where yeah, most of seems to be having the opposite approach as we've discussed before, where there's, there's just buy big and therefore it's part of us and we did none of the hard lift, none of the heavy lifting and then failed to keep it lifted. Uh, MGB does also add, what, mine, what, what uh, would Minecraft Legends count as that has been in development for a little while? It has been in development for a little while and Mojang is uh, uh, an Xbox studio and they have been for quite a while um, then I, I would it's interesting I would kind of consider them in the same space as Bungie with PlayStation is that they still have the intent to release on multiple platforms so they're not a first party exclusive um, development studio but it's it, uh, I, it'd be it'd be incorrect of me to say that that shouldn't be part of the conversation and from my understanding is Legends is okay no i'm not a, i'm not a fan i'm not a fan i have a dungeons was meh mm. <laughs> and um legends has been the same level of meh for me yeah yeah interesting yeah. uh buddy also adds uh look at destiny they brought fox own everything and just churn out stuff that is so mid and that's one of those things like when you it's they're spread too thin and Microsoft might be in the same boat. They're like, they poorly manage the small amount of studios that they had. They get more of them. And it's just, you've, you've only got so much you can deliver, just so much energy to expend. And now you've got that same amount of energy over more places. What are you going to expect? And it is the the prop, the other problem that it, it, the, the Disney example is they're trying to, to squeeze more blood out of the same stone. But, but because of the... I think the gaming industry has this in some way, but not quite the same. The, the essentially the pump and dump approach of I'll, I'll be back in a second. That's all right. Essentially, the pump and dump approach that Disney have been using, as in just pump out stuff, stuff that really doesn't have any legs to it, has no long term benefits. Let's just put it out there, and we'll never think about it again. Right? It's essentially what what's been happening. They're like, ah, oh, we'll release it cool very it, it feels like there's this weird nothing has legs anymore like i you know there's like series that come out and you go oh okay and then you never think about it again like you know i feel like there really hasn't been a strong series of probably I think the last one's probably the most recent example that is like that had collective monoculture um appeal you know, like Game of Thrones did it until it fucked itself, like Breaking Bad, uh, Lost, you know, like all those sorts of shows where they really controlled the narrative or controlled the conversation across what felt like collectively everyone, where the nature of streaming services has really altered the 
delivery method in terms of well, let's just make something that's that's let's use the stand this this the standard true and tests right. Have it be connected to something that you grew up with. It's nostalgia. It's characters that you remember. No new. Well, they try to remove as much heavy lifting from it as they can, and then try to deliver it and go, hey, consume this, and then move on to the next thing. Because even the MCU like it's lost every movie felt important every every piece of the puzzle building up until uh end game felt important like you really felt like you pro like you need to watch it to get the overall experience where now there's so much it's all mid there's really no drive like it doesn't have that blockbuster feel for everything and I do think the nature of, you know, binge watching and all these things have really had this, we're beginning to see the the long-term impacts of that. Where I myself, I really love the week-to-week approach. I love watching it and then I'll come back to the week later, you know, because I like pondering on it for the week. I like having those conversations. And whilst I'm not a big fan of sitting there and watching something for nine hours. I, my ADHD doesn't allow me to do that. Um, so I'm not the best target for the Netflix model. And even Netflix is stepping away from the Netflix model. I'm really derailed here into discussion around subscription and TV. But the point I'm sort of making is like the approach has, has been altered. You know, the the demand on a quick turnaround on a game is part of that. And the expectations have only gotten bigger when resources have lessened, time has lessened. But, you know, the demand is, is, is ever, ever growing. Um I don't know how we ended up there from the idea of the, the ABK deal going kind of in a, in a, in a sideways, but my, my real thoughts on this as you, you know, you, a couple of weeks ago, you, you know, you and I said, Max, I was like, this deal is going to go through. Like I felt like I didn't want it to, but I felt very confident that it would happen. I, I still think it can. Me too. There's like I, those I just, variables. I just don't, I just, I think Microsoft will have to jump through a ton of hoops. Yeah, and if that if that's once again if that was what Jim Ryan and the team's approach was, create enough concessions that they essentially give them enough rope to hang themselves, they may have they may have won. Mm. They may have got what they needed to, which is interesting. All right, let's get into the quick bits, and we'll wrap this bad boy up soon. Uh, quick bit number one: speaking uh, as part of its earnings call earlier this week, uh, it was said that quote playstation were planning to release a major title marvel spider-man 2 this fiscal year and we remain to continue growing creating new ip rolling out catalog titles for pc and strengthening live service development so not a whole lot there aside from the further confirmation that we are getting spider-man 2 between um march to march i think is how sony used their fiscal year uh so it's doesn't change just means it's coming yeah. this year and september is still on the plan uh creating new ip is thankfully in their new plan along with the live service especially with the purchases of uh, firework last week um haven fire sprite they're really heading into that live service area but also not do- doing it in such a way that doesn't um uh, impact their um, stronger single-player narrative-driven studios, and of course, their ability, their want, desire to roll things out to PC um, won't be slowing down. Because what was the amount? It was like three hundred? They expect to make three hundred million or something from from PC. Something like that. Yeah, I know. I know this one gave you a right boner. Uh, Armored Core Six coming twenty fifth of August. Yeah, super keen for that. Um, a, a from software game. Um, from software also made a in an interview they were talking that um they want to make more cool games more often mm, mm. um apparently they're in a space to be able to do that now um and the other thing was uh it is hinted that the shadows of the Erd tree expansion for elden ring may be closer than we think Ooh, apparently development on that started two months after the launch of elden ring nice holy shit yeah, that so, would actually make sense yeah so we we could be seeing that sooner rather than later which is awesome does that get you moist yeah uh the armor Cod six um I, I failed to realize that the, the armor Cod five came out in 2013 on ps4 or ps3 mm-hmm. it has been quite some time it has been a while this. so i am super keen for this yeah. um but that's ages away yeah um this week doesn't have many games coming out. But thing, <laughs> thing about like you know you're interested to see how Armored Core Six turns out. I am so curious to see how this turns out. Yeah. So this week the upcoming titles are Age of Wonders Four, PS Five, Second of May, Death of Treat, PS Five, Fifth of May, and Hogwarts Legacy, PlayStation Four, 
5th of May. Ooh, boy, that game is going to have some load screens. Can't wait to, can't wait <laughs> to see some Hagrid PS1 stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be rough. And then, and then, oh, no, the Switch version's in June, isn't it? Switch version's still another month. And a bit yeah, longer. man. Yeah. It's just going to be get progressively shitter, which is the part that interests me the most. It's like, you know, it was the PS5 version was pretty cool. PS4 version pretty get you know pretty mid switch version hot garbage and i i cannot wait to see that rapid decline but once again that that game is going to be one of the best selling games of the year and with this essentially staggered release they're going to guarantee that they will make sales for the remainder of this year it will be one of yeah. un, unquestionably one of the most successful games of this year oof rough for those that fought against it, I guess. But, you know, that's capitalism, I suppose. Oh, Max. Well, that does bring us to the end of the se- end of the show. Big thank you to everyone for coming uh, and listening to the show, taking the time out of your, your day, your week, your life to listen to me just rant shit. And Max go, yeah, that's about right. So, that's about right. Yeah. D- <laughs> <laughs> it is fun we do really appreciate you taking the time and especially to those that do come and join us over on twitch even though we never really stick to a regular schedule so we absolutely do love to see all these familiar faces come up and join the chat and as we are approaching ra- rapidly approaching episode 300 it when is 300 because i have a feeling that might be the weekend that i'm not here Mm, let me have a squeeze let me look at my folders let's see episodes ongoing shows for the players uh it is so this is episode 295 so it'll be five weeks away so episode 300 will release what's that 295 there six seven eight nine it'll be june the sixth uh no wait monday june the fifth will that will that will go live yeah which actually makes a lot of sense. I'm pretty sure we started in June, like five years ago, or 300 episodes ago. Hmm, well, there you go. So yeah, first week of June will be episode 300. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a cool, you know, a cool showcase, something to talk about in that time. Um, yeah, it is very hard to believe we've done 300 episodes of this bastard. Um, at least for me, you've done 200, 150, 100 and a, 100 and a bit. Yeah. Yeah, you've done quite a lot. Um, and yeah, and I'm sure I'll get all uh, reflective on it uh, come 300. But you know, it is still this is the longest running show I've ever done. Um, like my the first run, the first podcast I ever did made it to 100 and something. Um, the the show, the pop culture show, made uh, just under 100 before we transitioned into a different model. And yeah, no, this has been one of my long my longest running things I've ever made in my entire life. And thankfully I still enjoy it each and every week. I still enjoy it, you know, interacting with all you that list, listen, watch and comment. And I also enjoy doing it with you each and every week, Max. It's been absolute, uh, it, it's continues to be an absolute pleasure um, to, to watch you, you know, just <laughs> fill in for Josh and then go, hey, you want to do it on going? You're like, yeah, sure, why not? And, you know, just to see you step up and grow and, you know, get, just get better and better each time. And, you know, your, your, your newness to the industry still, uh, invigorates me in a nice way. Even 150 something episodes later, you know, you don't you still haven't got that cynicism. It's, um, yeah, I'm getting there. It's, yeah, getting there. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's, it's hard. It's really hard not to. It is. It does get harder and harder, but no, we do really appreciate everyone that takes even like a minute from their day to to listen to to what we do and, and what we have to say like we we understand that our audience is very small um we understand that we're a niche within a niche within a niche uh, and we don't market ourselves well or any of those things so the fact that we do have individuals that are happy to return each and every week uh leave comments discuss it's um it's very very appreciated and it also helped because i totally used it in my interviews this week um and it's actually been a great selling point because a lot of the jobs that I've applied for, uh, there is a lot of front-facing networking and performance in terms of you know giving events and all these sort of stuff. So I've been able to, I've been really lucky to be able to use 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 this as uh, an employable selling point. So uh, I can never uh, undersell my appreciation for all of you. Um, 
I really can't, especially in a time right now when I, when I need it. So thank you. All right, Max, let's send him home. All right, everyone, you know the drill. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8am on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify and 9am on those YouTubes. If you'd like to take part in future conversations with us or have any suggestions on topics, come check out our socials, Facebook, Discord, Instagram, Twitter. All of those links can be found in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash spotpultures where you can watch us record this show live, where you can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can. Tell your friends, tell your family about this PlayStation pod. And if you are listening on podcast services, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you watch us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. If you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash spotpultures, as well as our merchandise store, popcultures.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. But until next week, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And that was For The Players.